What's up, Tesla community? So I am here today to do a test, and that's to find out how long it takes to charge a Tesla Model S. So for the first part of the test, I'm gonna charge at a V2 supercharger. Uh, my current state of charge is 10%, and I'm gonna charge it all the way up to 80. So here we go, I'm plugged in. My initial starting battery is flat 10%. I've got all the climate controls set to off. So nothing's pulling extra power there. And I've got the navigation set so that it knows I'm at a supercharger. So hopefully it's preheated the battery to a good temperature. Okay, things are starting to get going. I'm at about a 74 kilowatt charge speed. And so far, that seems to be where it's peaking off. So I'm at a V2 supercharger that is capable of 150 kilowatt max. However, my state of charge, been here for about five minutes, I'm only getting 74 kilowatts. So this is one of the real downsides to the V2 superchargers. I've been here for about 10 minutes and I'm only getting a max charge of 54 kilowatts, about 260 miles per hour. And although the supercharging station can support up to 150, the 150 is split between two stations. So the reason I'm only getting 74 kilowatts is the other 76 kilowatts is going to the Model 3 that's sitting right next to me. So for doing this test, I thought about trying to come early in the morning at a time when the supercharging station was mostly empty, just so I could test it and get the full 150 kilowatts that V2 is capable of. But then I realized that for most Tesla owners, when they're going to charge, they're not using the superchargers when they're alone. They're using them when there's other Tesla owners using them also. So although V2 can support 150 kilowatts, very many of us, especially in concentrated states like California, never actually get to charge on an isolated supercharger. Okay, let's check in with it now. I've got another 55 minutes remaining until I hit the 80% mark. I'll come back and check on it again in a little bit. Get out, we just got a spike. So the Model 3 right next to me just unplugged and is pulling away and immediately my charge rate went from 74 kilowatts up to a, wow, look at that, 129. So this is pretty typical of something that'll happen too. You can get lucky and the person next to you charging leaves and your charge rate just jumps. So I'm getting a good charge rate now. I'm currently at 115 kilowatts at about 44% battery. I'm gonna stay tracking this. Watch as the percentage starts to fall off and see how long it takes me now to get all the way to 80%. Okay, things start to be looking like they're taking a dip a little bit. I'm down to 107 kilowatts now at a 47% state of charge. My time remaining though still says 40 minutes. All right, here we are. We're at 70% battery, 20% remaining to get to 80%, currently clocking in at 48 kilowatts. So as requested, I've kept the climate control, sentry mode, everything off for this test. And I gotta say, it is getting hot in here. <laughs> All right, 75% now, it says 20 minutes remaining, charging at 40 kilowatts. Now this is interesting. This looks a lot, looks like a lot more than 4% battery from my current percentage to hitting 80. So I'm gonna be interested to see how much that thing moves. Okay, so I figured out what's going on. So it looks like the trip marker on the Model S 100 kilowatt Raven performance is actually not 80%, it's 90%. So for the trip marker to be 80%, I'd have to drag it about down here. Bam, charging complete. 
So it took 57 minutes and 21 seconds for my Raven Model S to hit 80% battery starting from 10%. Um, I didn't get the supercharger dedicated to myself the entire time, but that's also typical for most people's charging experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my car, go home, and tomorrow I'm gonna go back to the V3 supercharger and run the same test again and find out what kind of supercharging times we get going from zero to 80% on the V3. All right, check this out. So I'm on the way to the Tesla factory right now to do the second part of the supercharging test at the V3 supercharger. And without even trying, I'm gonna arrive with exactly 10% battery. Okay, like last time, it's starting off kind of slower, about 60 kilowatts. So let's watch this thing ramp up and see at what point we start getting a high rate of charge. So it's been a pretty steady climb, one kilowatt at a time, up so far to 15%. So we're now at about 127 kilowatts and climbing. All right, so I'm currently at 20% battery, and just like on my last test here at the V3, it's kind of topped off for a minute, about 152, 153 kilowatts. Let's see if this keeps picking up and starts increasing again, and if I get back to that 180. So this is a little disappointing. Last time here at V3, where at this point in the charge, I was really getting up high and starting to approach that 170, 180 mark. This time I'm already starting to decrease down from 150 back to 148 kilowatts, only at 25%. So I gotta say, this test really hasn't gone how I hoped. I was hoping to get to that peak charge rate in that 170, 180 range and see how things turn out from there, but it's not all loss, and here's why. So charging in a V2 supercharger, like you saw in the first half of this video, I got stuck sharing my power with somebody else. I've had people on the left, right side of me the entire time I've been charging, and I've still been able to get up to 155 kilowatts, and that's because the V3 superchargers are dedicated. And that's really game-changing for Tesla, not just for us owners who can minimize our time off the road, but it allows Tesla to support twice as many cars through the same number of superchargers because they each spend less time charging. So the move to upgrading all these V2 superchargers to V3 is gonna be really critical to Tesla's expansion, especially in highly densely populated areas that where they sell a lot of Teslas. So I've currently been charging for 24 minutes. I've gained 44 kilowatts and I'm at 56% state of charge, charging at 71 kilowatt and 250 mile per hour charge rate. Okay, we're at the 36 minute mark, hit 70% state of charge, currently charging at 55 kilowatts and it says another nine minutes to go. There we go, 48 minutes and 30 seconds. We got from 10% to 80% state of charge here at the V3. So I tried the V3 supercharging test again here at the V3 supercharger at Kettleman City. I plugged in at 10% and unfortunately I still peaked out at about 160 kilowatts. I've got a little bit more of the clips here to show you, but as soon as the car peaked out at 160 and started declining, even before hitting 35% battery, I just scrapped the test, went inside, and I just enjoyed a meal. So my final thoughts, uh, after doing two back-to-back -back tests at different locations and different days on the V3 supercharger, it's clear that the Model S really can't charge at the 200 kilowatts yet that's possible. I'm interested to see if Tesla unlocks that at some point in the future. And more importantly, when the Model S and X are gonna get an upgrade to the thermal management system that's needed so it can charge at 250 kilowatts like the V3. 
Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up.